Good Friday. Good Friday. Well, listen, I want to speak just for a few moments and then we're going to receive communion together. And um, I'm really looking forward to receiving communion because it's just such, a, such an important part of our faith, what communion represents. And actually, communing together, breaking bread together is so important for us as believers. Amen. So important for us as a church. But I want to speak a message today called, It is Finished. It is Finished. And we're going to read out of John 19, verses 28 to 30. It says this, Later, knowing that everything had now been finished. Of course, Jesus is already on the cross at this moment in time. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished. And so that scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine and vinegar was there. They soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant and lifted it to the lips of Jesus. When he, had, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit and gave up his spirit. In other versions, it talks about how Jesus said, into your hands, I commit my spirit. What I love about that is that what Jesus actually did is he willingly went to the cross, but also he actually willingly gave up his spirit, willingly gave up his life. Typically on the cross, what would happen is that you would die just basically because if you're sitting on the cross, you would lose breath. But what they would do to make that uh, faster or to fast track, I guess, the death on the cross is that they would break the legs of those that were nailed to the cross. They would break their legs so that they couldn't push themselves up anymore and try to breathe. But Jesus actually, well before that moment happened, as he says, it is finished, the work has been done, and he willingly gave up his spirit. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. But what I love about what Jesus said there is he says, it is finished. It is finished. In other words, the work that Jesus came to do was completed. I love how Julie had read um, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, the gospel in a nutshell. Amen. God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you and for me to take the weight of sin and death upon his shoulders, a weight that we cannot carry, the weight of sin, our pain and shame. Jesus came that we might not walk in that anymore. So I've got three thoughts that I really want to share with you today. I'm going to tell you the three thoughts and then we're going to go through them one by one. The first one is paid in full, paid in full. The second one is a redemptive work. And the third one is a gracious work, a gracious work. So we're going to start with paid in full. It is finished. That's what it is in English. But in Greek, to, to telestai, to telestai, I had to, I had to get on Google and go, how do you actually say this word? And uh, I was listening to it over and over again. But to telestai, to telestai is a, is a, is a Greek word and ultimately, it means paid in full, or it is finished. It is finished. According to a Bible commentary that I was reading out of, uh, out of my Logos app, um, there has been receipts discovered with the word tetelestai written on the receipts. So some receipts, you know, you have a receipt, uh, you need to pay a bill or whatever it is, and ultimately, the word tetelestai would be written on a bill to say paid in full paid in full. And so what we know about Jesus going to the cross and when he says it is finished, ultimately what he is saying is that what he has come to do, which is to take the weight of our sin and shame, he's paid the price for your sin. He's paid the price for our foolishness, for all of the messy things about our lives as human beings, the stuff that we have done, that we have said. Amen. You're in good company in this room if you have made a mistake. You're in good company in this room if you have sinned, done foolish things, because 
All of us have fallen short and Jesus came for every single one of us. There is not one of us, amen, that didn't need to be redeemed. And Jesus came to pay that price in full. That's why he says, it is finished, paid in full. Your sins have been paid in full. When a debt is paid, it brings a sense of freedom. Amen? I don't know about you, but I've been in debt before, no longer in debt. And there's something freeing about paying off a debt, right? Now, when you pay off a debt, there's always more things in life that you accumulate, more things that maybe you need, and maybe you can slip back into debt. But the debt that Jesus paid, because He paid it, is a debt that is paid in full. It's a debt that, that it's, it's, it's not going to continue to be a debt. It's a debt that is done, it's signed, sealed, and delivered, paid in full. And it's not just a sense of freedom in that debt that's been paid. It's actually a debt that allows us to walk in freedom. Eh? It's a debt that's been paid that allows us to walk in freedom. Not freedom as the world knows it, right? But freedom that comes from within. Number two, a redemptive work. A redemptive work. Theologically, redemption refers ultimately to the saving work of Christ who came to accomplish our redemption by giving His life in substitution for our life as a ransom price. Ligon Duncan, everyone say Ligon. I don't know if it's Ligon or Ligon, but he's a Presbyterian scholar and pastor. And he says this, Redemption refers supremely to the work of Christ on our behalf, whereby He purchases us, He ransoms us at the price of His own life securing our deliverance from the bondage and condemnation of sin. The New Testament speaks of Christ's saving work in this way frequently. As in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 to 20, it says this, it says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honour God with your bodies." There's a response, isn't there, when it comes to the fact that there's a price that's been paid by Jesus, amen, that it's a redemptive work that has been done at the cross. There is a response from us to live our lives in a way that glorifies God, amen. In other words, we're a work in progress. We're hopefully moving forwards. And as we fall more in love with Jesus, as we allow Him to do a work in our hearts and in our spirits, as we're changed and molded and shaped to be more like Him, our lives become more of a life that brings glory to God. Amen? It is a redemptive work. So number one, paid in full. Number two, a redemptive work. And number three, it's a gracious work. It's a gracious work. Jesus willingly gave up His Spirit, like I had mentioned before. It's a gracious work. There's something gracious about Jesus willingly giving His life. He willingly went to the cross. Amen. We see when He was in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was some moment there where He says to the Father that if this moment, this time, if this cup could be taken from me, that would be great. But not my will, but your will be done. Then we see Jesus goes to the cross, but while he's on the cross, he takes a moment to have compassion on one of the thieves on the cross who defends Jesus. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. A salvation moment right there on the cross. Jesus says to the Father about all those around him, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then we see here as he gives up his spirit, he willingly goes, it is finished. The work is done and He gives up His life for you and for me. It's a gracious, a gracious work, amen? Hebrews 4 verse 16 says this, it says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, with confidence boldly come before His throne 
of grace. Why can we come with confidence? Why can we come boldly to His throne of grace? Well, because the price has been paid. Amen. The price has been paid. It's a redemptive work. Amen. And so therefore, because of God's grace, we can confidently come before Him with our mess, with our pain and our shame and all of the stuff that's going on in our lives and know that we will be accepted because of the price that was paid on the cross. Amen. Let us then approach God's throne of grace. The New King James Version, come boldly before His throne of grace. Amen. Come boldly. So no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what's been going on, no matter what yesterday looked like, no matter what your past looks like, you can come boldly to Jesus, amen, because He will accept you the way that you are. With your pain and your shame and the messiness of your life, you can just come and lay it at His feet. And because He's a gracious God, He doesn't want you to stay the way that you are. He wants you to draw near to Him, amen, so that He can draw near to you. And that the work of the Holy Spirit in your life will mold you and shape you to be more like Jesus. But it's such a crucial moment, isn't it? Good Friday, Sunday's coming. Who's looking forward to Sunday? But it's Good Friday, like Julie had mentioned, it's Good Friday because it's good for us. Amen? Jesus carried the weight of sin and shame. So although it can be a somber moment, it's also a moment to actually rejoice. Amen. Yes, or a moment to reflect, and we're going to do that in a few moments as we receive communion together. As we're reminded, amen, of what Christ has done. As we're thankful for all that He has done, as we give thanks for His body, we give thanks for the blood that was shed, the body that was broken, and the blood that was shed for you and for me, for you and for me. You know, in a few moments, the team's going to do a song called Calvary's Enough. I think it's such a fitting song because the whole idea of Calvary is enough is that the work of the Father, the work of Jesus was completed at the cross. It is finished. Calvary is enough. Why would a song be called Calvary is enough? Because Calvary is the hill on which Jesus was crucified, a hill just outside the Jerusalem walls. Calvary, otherwise known as Golgotha, the hill of the skull. But Calvary is enough ultimately means that it is finished, nothing more needs to be done. The price was paid in full. Jesus paid it all for you and for me so that we can walk in freedom, amen? That we could no longer be ruled by our circumstances and all the things that happen in our lives, right? Who knows that life can be a roller coaster, right? At some, sometimes, right? One moment I'm up, next moment I'm down. One moment I'm feeling good, the next moment something happens and I'm not feeling so great. And circumstances can change from moment to moment. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He paid it all. And so we don't need to find joy for ourselves because we can find joy in Christ because of the finished work at the cross. Amen? Calvary is enough. Calvary is enough. Luke 22, verses 19 to 20, it says this. This is Jesus when He's with His disciples. This is before He's gone to the cross and He's really given a command to His disciples around the Passover and having a meal together. And, and Jesus takes some time to talk about a moment that I don't think the disciples really fully understood in that moment. In fact, they wouldn't really fully understand it until Jesus died on the cross, then three days later, He rose again. And then I think things really started to fall into place for them as they started to understand all that had been happening as they walked with Jesus. I don't think they completely understood everything that was going on. They just knew there was something about this man. Who is this man, Jesus? That they were walking with, they saw the miracles, they believed. 
and he was the son of God, but they still didn't fully understand until after Jesus had been to the cross. But as they were around the Passover meal, Jesus is taking some time to give them a moment that they could continue to do together to remember what was about to take place and then continue to remember it even today, thousands of years later. So Luke 22 verses 19 to 20 says this, and he took bread, gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Amen. He took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. I wonder how fresh this bread is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He took the bread and he broke the bread. Can you hear that? He took the bread and he broke the bread, but he gave thanks. Amen. He gave thanks and he broke it. And in the same way, they took the cup gave thanks to the Father. He poured it and they shared in the wine, which represents His blood. The bread, His body broken. The wine represents His blood that was shed for you and for me. And so in a few moments, we're going to be breaking bread together. Not literally breaking bread because you have a little cup on your seat. And sometimes it takes a while to take the little Layers off. Anybody else struggle with that sometimes? Yep, yep. That's why I didn't bring one up here because trying to do that with a microphone in my hand can be a little challenging. But there is a cup on your seat and it's got a wafer and it's got some juice in there. And The team's gonna do a song called Calvary's Enough. Beautiful song. And I want you to reflect in this moment and give thanks and remember what Christ has done for us. Yes, it's a moment where it's like, oh my God, this is such a, such a, I guess such a horrific moment that Jesus had on the cross, but yet such a beautiful moment because of what it represents, amen? And so if you can think about what Christ has done for you, amen, and what He continues to do for you and that we would be thankful. And then once the song's finished, I'm gonna come back up and we're gonna partake together. Amen. So the team is going to sing for us. Nothing but your crucified Somehow in this room right now It is enough The weight of the world Too much for the souls of men But somehow you hold it all Up on the cross to die scarlet flowing from your hands inside covenant seed and ratified you knew the cost as the darkness fell and the temple covered in tore the death that deserved you
God, I know nothing, but I know this much. Oh, Calvary is always enough. Such a powerful song, amen? Such a powerful song, Calvary's enough. Why don't you stand up? We're going to partake together. Hallelujah. And Jesus said to his disciples, You eat this bread, this is my body broken for you, not just as disciples, but for you and for me. So he gave thanks, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. So in the same way, why don't we partake of the wafer together? And in the same way, Jesus talked about the wine that represents his blood spilled for you and for me. So he gave some wine to his disciples. So in the same way as we take the cup of juice, let's remember his blood spilled for you and for me. Let's partake together. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your your broken body and your your blood spilled for us, Lord Jesus. In a sense, it sounds brutal and maybe even kind of gross, but in reality, it represents all that you've done for each one of us, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for this life that we have, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the breath in our lungs, Lord God. We thank you for this weekend, Lord, as we celebrate Easter, as we celebrate all that you've done, your your death and your resurrection, Lord. Pray, Father, this be a defining day, a defining weekend, Lord Jesus, for each person in this room, Lord Jesus, for your church, Father. As we dig deep in our relationship with you, Father, as we lay all that we have down at your feet, that you would use what we have, that our lives would be lived for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, listen, the container's gonna go by and uh, you can put in your uh, cups that you've used into the containers. And while we do that, I just wanna talk to you about where you're at with Jesus. Every time we have a service, we always wanna make sure that we take an opportunity to find out how your relationship with Jesus is. Maybe you're in this place and you don't know Jesus. It's your first time in church or maybe somewhere along the way you lost your way and maybe you're walking with Him at some stage and somewhere along the way you lost your way and maybe today's the day that you can recommit your life. What better time to do that than here right now on Good Friday? I just want to explain it like this. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, you and me, every single person, no matter where you come from, no matter what's been going on in your life, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. He gave what was best to Him. Amen. He gave His only Son to die for you and for me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whosoever believeth in Him. It's just about believing. That you would have eternal life. Romans 10 verse 9 says, if you declare with your mouth that He is Lord, if you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. In other words, if you believe that He died on the cross, that He rose again, And you declare with your mouth that He is Lord. I'm not Lord of my life, but He is Lord of my life. 
you will be saved. Not you might be saved, but you will be saved. Jesus came to carry your pain, your sin, your shame, all the stuff that you weren't meant to carry yourself. Amen. We live our lives sometimes carrying things we don't need to carry. And Jesus paid the price. He paid it in full for your sin. And all you need to know today, right now in this moment, that Jesus loves you, that He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Yes, there's going to be change. Yes, He doesn't want you to stay the way that you are, but right now all your sin or your mess, whatever it is that you've done, you've been through, just lay it all at His feet. Believe in Him. Declare with your mouth that He is Lord and you will be saved. I'd love you to bow your heads, close your eyes. And if you're in this place and you don't know Jesus, if you want to commit your life to Him for the first time or recommit your life to Him, He would love to give you that opportunity today to invite Him into your life. So heads bowed, eyes closed. If that's you in this place, you don't know Jesus, you invite Him to your life for the first time or recommit your life to Him, we'd love you to put your hand up nice and high. We'd just love to pray for you in this place today. Amen. Hallelujah. We're gonna pray a simple prayer. It's just a simple prayer of inviting Christ into your life. Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. And I declare with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead. I repent of my sin. I receive your forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, why don't you give a celebration for those who have made a decision today. Listen, if you've made that decision today for the first time and recommitted your life to Jesus, then we actually have some team at the back here holding up a Bible pickup sign. We'd love to be able to just resource you with a New Testament Bible that you can take and you can read. And then also we'd love to get you connected because uh, growing in Christ is best done in community. And so um, you can either go to our website and find the promptings there to get in touch with someone or you can go to our next desk at the back here or you can talk to someone out in the lounge there with a lanyard on and we'd love to be able to let you know those next steps. Amen. It's not just about making the decision and then walking away. It's actually about doing life together in community and growing together. Amen. So if that's you, grab one of these Bibles and you can connect. Church, you're amazing. Happy Easter. I'm going to hand over to Brian. Come on, let's give a big hand for Pastor Damien in that word. Well, I hope you were blessed. That song really got me, by the way. It was so beautiful. But just, I hope you were blessed today. Uh, just a reminder that this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, why don't you find your way to the house of God? Be here. 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. in this very room, we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to be here. Bring a friend, bring your family, bring anyone you know who you think may want to be here or you think would benefit from being here. Bring them along the journey. It's going to be really great. So can I pray for you as we finish off today? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the privilege it is to be your sons and daughters. We thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made. We thank you, Lord, that because of you, we stand here free and whole, knowing, Lord God, that you love us, that you care for us. So as we head into this weekend, as we head into Resurrection Sunday, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything you are doing. We thank you for everything you have done. And I thank you, Lord, for every person in this place. May they have an incredible Friday. May they have an incredible Saturday. And Lord, may we have an incredible weekend. So in the mind of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. God bless you, church. Have an amazing week. Come out here for coffee, hangs, and we'd love to see you out there in the Welcome Lounge. God bless you, church.